Hi. I will have another item to show you um, for the upcoming holiday of Shavuos. This is something I've learned over the years, it's something I think I can demonstrate through my collection, through various items I have here open. And the commonality between all of these items is that they are all the uh, Minhug Ashkenaz, the custom of Germany. Uh, the custom of Germany proper is means it's not the French custom, and it's not the Polish custom, and it's not the Lithuanian custom, it's specifically the German custom. And these four items range in date, uh, one of them being a facsimile, so the, the original, what this is copying, also ranges, yet they all show one thing that's strikingly similar, and I will demonstrate this. So first I will show you what these items are. So this is the facsimile of the, the 1536 edition of the mocks are printed by Chaim Schwartz or Shachor in Augsburg. And this, I don't own the original of that, this is a, a facsimile. And it's the mocks are for the entire year, as many mocks are more at that time and, and for many, many centuries until the modern printing press. We have next this item, which is the Prague 1758, a uh, large or folio edition of the Moxor, which this was one of two volumes. Um, this volume was for the High Holidays and the other volume, this, excuse me, this volume was for the Shalosh Regalim, the festivals, the other volume was for the High Holidays. This volume w was one of the first Hebrew books uh, to be printed in London, and well, printed in London after a certain point, and this is the Ashkenazic Moxor of 1770, um, printed in London for Ashkenazic Jews. And then finally, uh, we have this item, which is a recent new and expanded edition of the Siddur of Rabbi Hirsch Trevis uh, that was originally printed in Germany in 1561. This is the recently expanded edition. This is actually my personal sitter, but I wanted to show you something on this that can be demonstrated through historical artifacts such as these and then this as well. So the, there is a long piot that many have come to know called Akdamos or the Akdamos Milan. And that was written by a contemporary of Rashi in the 11th century, Rabbi Meir ben Yitzchak, who was the chazan and the, what he's known as Shaliach Tzibor in the community of Worms. And he, uh, he wrote this long, long piet to proceed. The first day of Shavuos is um, reading of the Torah, and it, it is a, a long, and Ar long Aramaic poem which speaks about uh, the, the day the Torah was given on, on Mount Sinai. And um, what I wish to demonstrate, I have that open on each one of these volumes, and what I wish to demonstrate is how the layouts of this in, in printed form didn't change over many centuries. Uh, the 1536, it printed it the same way, essentially, as a modern edition done within the last decade. How was that? So the reason, the way that is, is that first of all, it's an alpha, what's called an alphabetical acrostic. So it follows Aleph, Aleph base. Um, each each strophe is two parts. So Aleph, Aleph, base, base, and so on. But what is, m and, and that is noticed by all of the printers and the earlier manuscripts and so on. But what what is consistent across these layouts is the last two letters, ta or sa, which was the composition of this poem throughout all the stanzas. And every stanza ends with those two letters. And if we turn to the earliest one, that is, it, it is marked off with a, with a space between the beginning and the end to show that each letter ends with tough Aleph, tough Aleph, and that continues to the end of the Akdamos. In the Prague edition, the same. There's a space, and it, and it marks off at the end the same way. 
Same thing goes for the London edition and the recent edition. And it's, I thought that that's very remarkable uh, because this is really a, a very famous and, and important poem that's uh, been said over uh, in, in Ashkenazi community since the time of its writing, um, probably nonstop. And the fact that even the layout survives to our modern printing is something that is pretty remarkable. Something that is accepted and, and said, over, said over continuously, take for example Kol Nidre. Kol Nidre has gone through many, many layouts and different, cha different changes in how it's printed and written. And that's to be expected for something so old. But this is something also that's coming on to a thousand years old. And it has not really changed layouts since its time of origin. I think it also says something about the tune being very old. I don't know how old the, the tune that we all know the Akdamos is repeated in, but I think it says something about how the tune has been consistent, at least for the time span of the items I have here in front of, in front of you. So to summarize, this is something that has been uh, said over since the time of its writing, which has almost been a thousand years, and the layout has been remarkably consistent with modern printings, 16th century printings, 18th century, and so on. So I, I hope I've shared something that is uh, new and maybe insightful over this great poem of Akdamos, and uh, I, hope you, I hope you enjoyed seeing these items. There's one small variation that has taken place in the history of Akdamos, uh, which you can see through two of the items in my collection, or, or really three. Um, the original Akdamos was supposed to take place after the reading of the first verse of the first Aliyah of Shavuos morning. And so you were to read the verse uh, that starts with the word Bahodesh and ends with the word Sinai, and then read Akdamos and continue all the way until the end of the Akdamos, and then continue that Aliyah, which is Kohen, by Yesu Mirifidim, continue. That was the original intent of the poem, and that, der that derives, from the, that derives from, from the ancient method of reading the Torah in public, which employed the use of a metorgamon, which was a, a, a translator and orator who used to speak in Aramaic, and that is maybe one of the reasons why this was written in Aramaic to start with. But as in, during the 18th century, there was a debate over whether to continue that practice because it's something called a hefsik, which is that once a bracha is made over, over the aliyah, can one stop to say, so, to say a poem? This was never considered in the or, original centuries of the writing of the poem, but as as decisors in the more eastern parts of Europe were, did not want to continue that practice and wanted to put the Akadamus either before or after the bracha. And you see that in these items where again this is a facsimile of the 1536 edition and it has the verse preceding Akadamus and then it continues until the end. And the Akadamus continue, continues non not stopped until, until and then continues the verse as if he never stopped it and this is also repeated in the london machzor which is western european and it has that shows also this first verse and the abdamos continuing till the end and then by yisu yet however we see in the prague edition it, it instructs that one should read Akdamos before the Kohen makes that bracha. And the reading of the Torah is to come after the final Akdamos and then that bracha, Bachodesh, after. And you see that change taking place in one of the great Ashkenazic poems uh, and the great Ashkenazic piyutim. Um, and a major feature of the Ashkenazic liturgy is the Akdamos, but that change did take place during the 18th century 
and you see it reflected in the items I have here.